Hey, hey, seventh grade. Hope you're doing well on this Thursday. It, this is the video for March 26th. Today you're going to be moving to a new unit in your writing and grammar books. I have had you looking at dictionary skills, and now we're going to talk about a related but a bit different skill, which is library skills. Now, in theory, we would obviously um, be together and take a trip to the library, but right now all libraries are closed. Um, so unfortunately, we won't get to do that while we do this unit, um, but they do have some really good information for you, um, for you to read before you begin. I do encourage you, I know sometimes, especially if you think that you just know the answers, it's tempting to just go through and try to finish the worksheets really quick. But there's actually some really helpful information um, on pages 345, 346, and 347, and then throughout the unit as you're reading. Um, being able to navigate a library, to understand how they're organized, to think about where um, you will go to find different kinds of reference material is going to be an increasingly important skill in high school and then definitely in college and if you decide to go beyond that. I have a husband who's a um, professor and has had to navigate this a lot and so did I um, in both college and graduate school. So I'd love for you to spend some time looking at that. You're going to be thinking about how to put things in alphabetical order. You're going to be um, introduced to and understanding a little bit more about the Dewey Decimal System. And then you'll also be thinking about catalogs and call numbers and how those work um, in general here. And then I hope once the libraries reopen that we'll have either individually or altogether the opportunity to go and sort of try some of this out. So um, I hope you'll enjoy that. I do think it's interesting as you get started. In vocabulary today, the title of the uh, two pages that you're doing is called More Building Material. So again, this is just building blocks to make you a better speaker, reader, writer. Um, you're going to be working with the prefix trans and some different root words to think about the meanings of different words in different contexts. And then on the opposite page, page 27, you'll go through and in a very similar fashion to yesterday, you will use the context clues in a sentence to make meaning of the bolded word. So again, if you have any questions as you're going through this, you're not quite sure what it means, feel free to snap a picture or just send me a note, um, lsmallwood at mylegacyschool.com. And I'm glad to um, check in with you um, and we can work together to make sure that you can figure out what you're doing. It's also not cheating to um, Google any of these words, look them up on dictionary.com or in an actual dictionary. The goal of these exercises is to build, like I said, your um, vocabulary as readers, writers, speakers, and thinkers. And so um, whatever tools you have to be able to um, make sense of these words, I hope that you will use them. Then finally, you get to read, I think, a really great story today about a guy named Paul who makes a special trip to visit his grandmother. And um, this is authored by an uh, author that I really love. Her name is um, Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. I'm going to post in the additional resources column on our Google spreadsheet, a YouTube interview with her talking about her writing process, um, just to kind of hear a little bit more. I think it's really interesting. But two things I'd love for you to do as you're reading. The first thing is think about point of view. Whose point of view do we have in the story? And why is having it told in that point of view um, helpful? What does that do to further the story? How would it be different if we had a different point of view? So as you're reading, think about, is this in first person, third person? Whose perspective are we seeing or not seeing? Um, and, and make some guesses about why the author chose to do that. And then the second thing I want you to do is think about the title. It's a bit of an unusual title. Again, the title is Love Story, comma, sort of. So when you get to the end of the story, I'd like you to go back and think about the title and think about, um, is that a good title? How does it fit? What do you think the author was thinking when they made the decision to title this story that way? You do have a short quiz, of course, in your quiz packet to take when you finish this. The answer key is in the Google Drive. Or again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Hope you guys are hanging in there. Talk to you soon.